What's going on guys, this is Michael MGF, and today is the day. It's Force Friday 2016, and LEGO just put out their entire first wave for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And guys, we're kicking the series of reviews off with the Rebel U-Wing fighter. And the number for this one is 75155. The recommended ages are 8 through 14, and it has a piece count of 659, while the price point is 79.99. Honestly, a great price for a great build with a great set of five exclusive minifigures. And we'll talk about all the reasons just as to why you should totally consider picking this one up if you haven't already in just a second but guys I hope you've had a good force Friday I was at Toys R Us camped out from 5 p.m. until midnight in the cold and that alone was insane but then when cards weren't working and nothing was going right and everything started to go sideways I was starting to think that I might not be able to do this review today and then thankfully everything sorted itself out and I made it through force Friday just barely but not only did I manage to score the entire first wave of sets obviously but I also got the entire wave of Black Series figures Funko Pops and that Black Series Stormtrooper helmet and it was pretty awesome for me once again everything sorted itself out and all the problems finally stopped oh my god it was insane let me know how what your experience was like uh, down in the comments below I'll be talking about mine over on my second channel but for right now we're doing this first review and it's gonna be five straight days of nothing but reviews from my channel guys probably until like Tuesday or Wednesday so get hyped and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so of course we're going to start off with Jin Erso, the lead character in the film, and this figure is really cool for the most part. There are a couple of little things that kind of disappoint me that you'll probably consider to be nitpicking, and that's totally cool, um, but... You'll notice here that LEGO has this entirely new piece, and at first in my analysis video that I did, I thought that this was going to be, like, uh, actually double molded, as in, like, you know, kind of like the way we've had double molded legs and arms recently in the past year. Um, but this is this entire piece, this hat, aside from the goggles, which you've probably seen these Rebel goggles before, these are not new. But this hat, this entire new piece is. And I thought it was going to be double molded and, like, have, you know, a whole separate mold for her hair attached to the bottom, but no, this is actually all printed it on as you can see it's all just one big tan mold with a decent amount of printing on it for her hair and what appears to be like sort of this mic on the side which looks really nice and um you know, she does have this in the movie, but for the most part, it looks like she's not going to be wearing this. Like, this might be for one sequence. Um, so I'm not sure if Jin Herso's hairstyle was not decided on when the, when LEGO went into production on these sets, but I find it kind of odd they went with this instead of a hairpiece. Um, now, personally, I mean, just as a side note, I already made my own hairpiece that I'm going to be using, but that's me. Uh, the face is pretty good. I mean, it's starting to grow on me. Do I think it looks all that much like Felicity Jones? I mean, it's not like Ray from the Force Awakens. It's not spot on to Felicity Jones. This is the aggressive facial expression, which I really like, but uh, it's more so like this face that I, I don't think that looks like Jin or so, you know, Felicity Jones at all, personally. I think that's a little bit of a miss, but a nice attempt regardless. Um, I, I just don't really dig the design of this particular side of the face at all, honestly. Um, but that's just me. Again, you might consider it to be nitpicking, and that's totally cool. But um, what we got here, I thought was like maybe some kind of rocket launcher, um, but this is actually what I think is her like nice stick that we see here used very briefly in, in the trailer. And I say knife stick, that's not the official name for it, but it's very similar to a knife stick. It's made up of a few standard uh, pieces of lightsaber hilt and these two pieces attached to the, you know, to the top, bottom and the top of it and then this clip. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this out of her hand just to get it out of the way. You'll notice she has dark tan uh, hands, by the way, for her like uh, gloves, which is pretty cool. And then a silver pistol. We've seen this before. Ray had it in, all, in pretty much both, you know, all the Force Awakens sets. And uh, so that's not new, but uh, cool to have back regardless, I guess. And um, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and take off the head to give you a better look at this cloth piece she has and of course you might have noticed already she's got the indiana jones bag and uh, it's kind of annoying to put on um because it really makes uh makes it makes it so that this cloth piece that she has really doesn't move all that much and this uh bag going on top of this cloth piece is a really tight fit um but i mean it's a nice a nice accessory blah, 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 words it's a nice accessory to have regardless um so yeah, this cloth piece that she has here is really nice. It's uh, it's 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 a dark gray cloth piece. I, I'm not gonna lie, this kind of worries me. I mean, it is really thin. Uh, you know where it actually connects to both pieces, like where you know where both pieces of this cloth connect. It's pretty thin, and I feel like that could potentially tear. Um, so that's a little worrisome, but it's still really nice to have. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice accessory, and she does have that in the movie. Um, but what I really dig on this minifigure is this torso design, and uh, you'll notice that uh, the torso, it uh, it looks. Spot 
spot on, man. I mean, the torso, the jacket, everything looks great. I mean, the design work is all there, and I'll definitely be basing my own uh, painted torso off of this when the time comes for you to make Force Wagon figures. Love the torso design. I'll go ahead and uh, put her head back on here just so it looks a little bit more inviting. And then we have uh, the design on the back continuing, and uh, that is all accurate, and that all looks great. Love the torso on Jyn or so. Um, and and her, her, I mean, the legs are a little bit under detailed. I mean, there's really no detail at all. She's just got a standard pair of black legs, so that is a little bit awkward. I think some printing was due uh, right here because uh, the cloth piece doesn't cover her legs. So, um, yeah. Um, but, I mean, aside from that, though, guys, it's a really nice representation of Jyn or so. I can't wait for Wave 2 of the Rogue One sets when hopefully they actually do give Jyn or so a proper hair piece. Um, but, I mean, for, for the first wave, I really do like this minifigure. It's just the face that's a little bit of a letdown. Next up, we've got Cassian Andor. Definitely a more simplistic figure, but just as awesome nonetheless, and really accurate. The likeness to Diego Luna, taking a look at the face here, is fantastic. I mean, looking at that, that is spot on. As I mentioned in my analysis video, love that, and especially now having it in person, it looks really great, and uh, I do like the more, like, timid and, uh, you know, like, laid-back expression. Um, and I guess that's more so the alternate expression, but if we go ahead and turn the head around here, you can see we have pretty much the same face, just he's, he's uh, smirking, and he's a little bit more, you know, I guess like uh, it's more of like an arrogant expression. And it, uh, it works really well. I love this entire head, both sides of it, great. The hairstyle isn't really what I would call spot on, but I mean, honestly, I would have done the same thing if I wasn't going to make a new, uh, newly molded hair piece, and I really wasn't expecting Lego to make one anyway. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, you can kind of see his face does show on the, on like uh, underneath his hair piece on the back there. So that's kind of unfortunate, um, but what can you do? And then uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the torso. This is, of course, the uh, variant that uh, most of the, the marketing, where that we, you know, mar marketing material that we've seen Cassian Andor in, he's sporting this blue jacket. And we do see it in the trailer. He is going to wear this in the movie for at least one sequence. And you can see Lego did a great job with the torso here, portraying everything from the fur to his utility belt to the binoculars he has on that utility belt. It's all there. And it even continues down onto the legs, which I love. It's really consistent. I mean, the flow is great from the torso to the belt to the legs. It's really awesome. And Lego nailed this figure man and the, the the you know the color that they use is a base color for the legs before printing on the rest of the coat it's great i mean this figure is awesome this, the design that's continue on to the back with additional fur and even more you know of, of his utility belts and other accessories um as part of the design he's got a standard blaster um in the gunmetal color that was debuted in the force awakens sets and so that's really awesome this figure is really awesome i think lego really nailed cassian andor and i cannot wait to hopefully maybe you know eventually get a one or two more variants of him like we did with Poe. Had to adjust the frame really quick there. Sorry about that. But Bastan or Bastan? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll stick with Bastan for now. Uh, Bastan, I was really excited to unbox this guy, you know, pull him out of the bag and put him together. And uh, it's a really great figure with a really great new mold, a color palette that is a little bit questionable, but it's still really awesome regardless. And this this figure is, is I mean, for, like I said, for the most part, aside from the nitpicks that you'll be about to hear, are, are really, really great. Um, now, I do want to point out that you might have noticed, and this is why I was a little bit upset when I put this guy together. The eyes are lopsided on this brand new, newly molded headpiece. The freaking eyes are lopsided and it pisses me off so bad. My OCD just died. It just crumbled and died when I put them together. Um, so if I want to include this guy in my showcase, I'm before painting him, I'm definitely going to have to order another head off Bricklink. That, that is just so god. Anyway, um, just to give you a quick 360 of the head, you can see this is a really great new piece with a lot of really good printing on it. All the different uh, fur designs on the front, his mouth is spot on, the eyes are great. Um, I mean, you got the ears as a part of the design. I mean, he's got this entire neck brace, which is really cool that LEGO has done here and incorporated into it. I mean, absolutely love this headpiece. This is, I mean, this is really great. I just really wish the eyes weren't lopsided on mine. I just had to be that guy um, who got the misprinted one. But we're going to go ahead and pull it off here, and here's what it looks like uh, under Underneath, by the way, it is entirely made up of the primary skin color that you see, and then it looks like everything else is printing, which is all the more impressive. And I love how like there's a little bit of clothing even uh, molded onto the back to make it more consistent and not just cut off. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so here's the torso design. The torso design is great. You got all the straps and buckles you could ask for, um, and then you got all the dark green elements and other different uh, designs that the Lego has put on here. A zipper on the on the very uh, top there, and then that does continue on to the legs and all the different like metallic outlines lines that he has. It's all great. I mean, this, this the design of Bastan is awesome, and it's 
all printed on all of green parts. Then the design does continue onto the back and that looks really great as well. All the different pouches and other different things. And uh, I don't know if like this emblem on the front or this emblem on the back means anything. He's part of the new species uh, of the, uh, the uh, Lacaru, I believe. Um, the, I don't know. And he's got a standard uh, gunmetal blaster just like Cassian. And uh, he's really great. Um, the fur color is a little off. He's a bit more of a gray in the movie. And then his suit is a little bit also a bit more of a gray and not really an olive green. But I don't know if Lego based this off concept art or not. And also, we don't really know. Um, you know, and obviously, Lego's color palette is a little bit more limited. But I should really stop talking and show you the, the uh, Rebel Trooper so we can actually, like, you know, look at the set. Fourth figure is the Rebel Trooper. And this Rebel Trooper is really awesome, sporting a newly molded helmet piece, which is great. New dark tan piece with uh, some dark gray printing on the sides. Uh, you got dark green on the very top there as a secondary color printed on, which is really cool as well, with a yellow uh, like emblem on the left side of it, which is a, a nice touch. And then we also have, um, you'll notice a little bit of dark gray on the uh, sides of that as well. And this is an entirely new helmet design also for the for the movies. And uh, this is really cool, you know, a new helmet to bring in for the Rebels in the, you know, the Star Wars universe. And so, yeah, then we also have this face, which we've seen God knows how many times at this point. Lego has made sure to rehash the hell out of it since the Force Awakens sets. Um, and then we also have uh, this, this new torso design, which with, which has what it looks like a lot of pouches and potentially magazines, even though I don't really think they would need magazines. So there's definitely probably other things in those pouches because uh, obviously that's not exactly how blasters work. But um, anyway, you'll notice we have uh, a lot of the, you know that design continuing on to the back here with uh, some more pouches and some buckles and a strap, uh, which is really nice. And um, then you'll notice the legs are like a new form of cargo pants that LEGO is printing for these sets because not only do we get these in dark tan, we get these in brown, and we also get them in multiple of uh, multiple Rogue One sets. I think we get these in like three different Rogue One sets, so it's, you know, of this first wave, which is pretty cool. And then he's got a standard blaster, just like the Stan and Cassian. And finally, the man in the cockpit himself, the U-Wing pilot. This is pretty much just a dark blue X-Wing pilot, um, but still very cool. Lego's always nailed it with their Rebel pilots. He's got the dark tan gloves as well, by the way, I should point out. That's pretty awesome. Um, but the torso design is great. I mean, I really love the tubing and how seamless it is, you know, con connecting to the belt. Obviously, there's a little bit of a crease, but I mean, you know, you keep that that's always expected and Lego still really made a uh, you know a really great effort to keep it as consistent as possible and I love that and everything else on the torso is fantastic and that all continues down onto the legs and the legs are, are you know even better Lego just keeps doing even better with each uh, iteration of rebel pilot figures and this guy is absolutely no exception the design does continue onto the back as well with additional straps and buckles there and he's got a standard black pistol and then we also do have uh, his own unique helmet with its own own uh, unique printing on it. Not a new design, not a new piece, but still really awesome with everything it does have to offer. And uh, I, I mean, I, I don't really have much to say about the designs on the top of the helmet other than they look really cool and uh, very reminiscent to the guy we saw in uh, the Comic-Con, uh, like, or I don't know, the Celebration Reel. Um, this looks like the pilot that we saw in that briefly. But yeah, so then we also do have uh, this face, which has the uh, orange visor going over his eyes, of course, which is really cool and the different shades Lego has in that. Um, and he is smiling as well and he's got a, like a, you know his microphone off to the right there and then if we continue to go ahead and uh, turn him around here and turn the head around you'll notice he's got a more concerned and uh, like you know super freaked out expression because I'm guessing he's getting blown up and this guy probably dies in Rogue One so yeah um, aside from that though this is a really great figure really great uh, set of figures and uh, they're they're you know they're they're fantastic for the most part just with the minor problems that I pointed out and now we're finally going to go ahead and take a look at the build. Okay, so the U-Wing fighter itself. Like I said at the start of this video, this is a great build and it has everything you would want on it and everything going for it. So I guess we'll go ahead and start off with the main cockpit. Now this canopy piece is actually fully printed. Those are not stickers, which is really awesome. And of course that flips up by use of a couple basic clips. We go ahead and take our U-Wing pilot and uh, we stick him right in there on that little axle piece right there, the two by two available space. He sits right in there and then inside the cockpit is uh, actually a printed control panel. You would think that's a sticker, but that's actually printed. I believe this is its first appearance, but that is a really nice change of pace to most control panel uh, pieces slash stickers we get. So I think this is really great and I absolutely love that little detail. And uh, so that's awesome. That closes right over him and actually it looks like you get to lay him down just a little bit more there and then he uh, sits inside just fine. And so yeah, then the main function of the, uh, of the set, or I guess the, like, 
like the main playability feature rather is uh, the spring loaded shooters on the front here and you would think that like there's probably a mechanism on the bottom that you push down and you actually have a cockpit on the bottom which I'll talk about in a second actually hold on I recorded the rest of the clip and just totally forgot to mention it and the cockpit on the bottom of the U-Wing is not really a cockpit it's more so just like a window for some extra sight uh, for the U-Wing pilot so he can see down as opposed to just you know like oh they're gonna just shot a spring loaded shooter uh, you know as opposed to just up or straight ahead and uh, you also have uh, some stickers on the on both sides of it here those are not printed unfortunately but the printed canopy definitely makes up for it um, but yeah this is not really a cockpit on the bottom it's more so just a window even though it kind of looks like a cockpit and I just wanted to make sure I pointed it pointed it out because I did of course end up forgetting but uh, you don't push down on the spring loaded shooters at all from the bottom like what I was thought like what I thought you were going to have to do what you actually do is you push down on these two one by two blue tiles that stick up and uh, it's a really cool like uh, mechanism that Lego did here that doesn't actually use any technique which I thought was really awesome and again you just push down on one of the uh, one by two tiles here these two, these two here and then you just push down and they they come firing out and it's uh, it's honestly really cool and like I said because it doesn't use any technique I was pretty impressed and then you have two um, obviously like stationary like non-usable guns you know that are just there for the design of course and that's cool um, and then the actual like uh, stickers on the wings before we cover the wings you can see we've got some added detail here and here with a little bit of weathering as part of the design and uh, they're pretty much just inverted on either side from each other and um, yeah so I guess we'll go ahead and cover the wingspan now and the wingspan is pretty cool um, I mean the you know it's it's like when I say wingspan we're more so going to talk about like the actual like wingspan function here and uh, so by use of a couple ball joints right here that you can see you have a ball like a little ball joint piece here and then the actual like piece that connects is attached to the wing and then that's how the wings lock in place and so when you fold out the wings here you can see that it's it's, it's called the U wing right because apparently it's in the shape of a U but I mean that is the most obtuse U I've ever seen in my life um it's more of like a really wide V um, so, uh, I don't know why this is, this vehicle's called the U-Wing, um, I guess we'll find out when Rogue One comes out, hopefully, um, but it's not a U, to say the least. Um, regardless though, LEGO did their best to portray the design here, and they did a great job, this whole thing is really fantastic, and then, uh, in the very back here, we do have a little bit of storage where you can, I guess, like, fold down this ramp and store some blasters, I mean, it's, it's alright, you just got some, like, a ton of ventilation pieces there, and you really can't do much with it. Um, but it's all there and it does look really cool um, regardless on the back there and then the other detail like the other function that this set has the other playability feature is we have the troop bay and on the bottom here the troop bay all you do is you take these little uh, these little you know pegs and you pull them and then the doors come open but before we talk about the troop bay I do want to mention that these are stickers on the doors you have two stickers on two 4x4 four four panels and they are inverted on either side from each other and uh, they're really cool and I messed up those one of those stickers and I had to peel that off with an exacto knife and fix that but that's just a little side story we'll go ahead and pull open the other door here as well and inside you can see you've got a fairly decent troop but you really can't fit a lot of minifigures to be honest and then close the doors maybe two it's a very limited troop bay there's not a lot of space in there at all um, but mainly what Lego advertises that you do is that you take the minifigures and maybe put them in like a seated position and then you kind of like put them in there and then fold the uh, uh, the spring loaded or the uh, stud shooters over them to kind of hold them in place. It's not really the most functional, uh, you know, feature that we have here. It's not really too minifigure friendly, but um, you still have these really cool articulated arms for the uh, stud shooters that come folding out on both sides of the troop bay here and then one on the opposite side here. And uh, obviously, if you don't know stud shooters work, you just go ahead and push down on the gray lever and then the stud goes flying. And uh, the stud shooters along with the spring loaded shooters have always been great playability features and it's great to have them on this build. And uh, there are guns on the sides of the troop bay on the real U-Wing, so LEGO took advantage of that. And uh, aside from that, we can go ahead and try to stick a couple minifigures in there. We'll, we'll take the stand here and uh, we'll try to put them in there. And it's, like I said, not only is it, you know, limited for minifigures, but it's limited access. And I mean, we'll go ahead and actually try to open up the, uh, get this wing out of the way. Hopefully that helps a little bit. But I mean, you can kind of put a minifig in there and it's just uh, it's a little difficult um, as you can see like the stand here he's you gotta uh, you know like kind of put him in an arch position and then sort of fold them 
in. That's how I had to do it there. Um, but he goes inside there, and then, of course, you can uh, close the door in front of him. But, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe if we actually go ahead and fold in the stud shooter, that would probably help. Um, you can see, like I said, maybe, you know, at max, three minifigures. If, like, you put two in there and then maybe throw another one in. Um, but it's, it's, it's not only limited access, but it is limited for the minifigures and not overly minifigure friendly. So if there's any con that I would have with the build, it's probably that. Um, but also, you know, that's, that's a factor of the scale, right? You know, Lego has a limited scale to work with, and so that's what that's what came of it. And it's still really good regardless, and it doesn't take away from the build all that much at all. Um, so yeah, now uh, the final, uh, I guess, you know, uh, point that I do want to cover here, obviously the engines and the random like Wolverine claw on the top there. That's just really cool detail, but I don't know why it's there. Um, you can see that we do have the engines and they, they utilize some like pickaxe pieces, which is pretty cool on the front here, but then also stickers on each one. You have two stickers per engine on the top and then the bottom of each one. And then that is the same for this engine and then the other two on the opposite side here. And they're all the exact same sticker, by the way, I should mention. Um, and then aside from that, I mean, they're just really cool. I mean, they do the job, they're accurate and uh, there's not really a whole lot else to add. And um, aside from that, guys, that is it for the U-Wing itself, a really fantastic build with a really bright color palette white uh, is you know white blue and yellow is not something you see a whole lot in the Star Wars universe for uh, different vehicles but uh, yeah so as my closing thoughts on the Rebel U-Wing fighter it's a little pricey. I think this would be a little bit more fair if it was more in the $60 to $70 range. $80 is a little bit steep, but then of course you got to factor in Lucasfilm and their, you know, whatever uh, markups they, they request that uh, Disney, or that they request Lego put on these. I have no idea how it works, to be honest with you, um, when it comes to markups, but this one definitely is worth more like $60 or $70, and it's just, it's all up to you if you want to dish out the $80 bucks and get your Jinner, so your Cassian Andor, your Bistan, and your badass you win. So, in the end, it's up to you that's the set and uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video well actually we got to take a look at the box and then the instruction manual the extra pieces then we'll finish the video so the box is pretty straightforward and pretty much what you'd expect. You can see this is our first time with the new cover art. This time for this year's set, we've got the Death Trooper that's going to be on the top right corner until we start getting Episode 8 sets next year. So we're stuck with this badass Death Trooper graphic for the next year, and that is not a problem. And that's their main marketing promo image for the Rogue One line of toys. And so we also have Jetta or Eadu or Eadu. I can't pronounce that, the name of that second planet that's going to be in Rogue one but it looks like all of our characters with the u-wing are running on one of those two planets that's going to be in rogue one and then we have all the minifigures on the top of the box here that are in the set along with the stan who's sporting the actual size reference on the top as well and then on the back we have all the features that i just went over um, along with an advertisement for lego.com slash star wars and the new free app that i don't care about so yeah um, aside from that though that's pretty much it for your 80 dollars piece of cardboard Thankfully, LEGO didn't waste any paper with the Rebel U-Wing Fighter. We've only got one instruction manual, which is nice, because when LEGO unnecessarily splits them up and will give us two for no reason, it can get a little old. Um, but this one comes in, in a total of 113 pages that you can see in the bottom right corner there. And then if we go ahead and continue to flip through, you can see we've got this year's like minifigure checklist of renders of each character, and uh, they all look really great. I can't wait to talk about each one of those uh, when I review each of their respective sets, and uh, that looks awesome. They all look great. We've got the Death Trooper graphic twice on uh, like on these couple pages here which kind of looks a little awkward um but it doesn't matter you can see we have the entire lineup though of all the rogue one sets all five of them that i'm going to be reviewing again from like now until tuesday or wednesday we're going to do director krennic shuttle next by the way and that's going to be pretty insane pretty big set to talk about and then we also have a really badass render of the rebels on scarif uh fighting against krennic in his shuttle and a couple of tie strikers behind him along with the u-wing up in the air and that just looks so damn awesome. I really hope that's a wallpaper that becomes available on lego.com because that is great. And then you can see we also have the master of the Lego Star Wars Master Force Builder app shit thing. I don't really care. Um, and then that's really it. So there you go. The extra pieces aren't exactly mind blowing but you can see that we do get an extra pair of goggles, an extra pickaxe, an extra spring loaded shooter piece, plenty of connectors, an extra gunmetal lightsaber hilt, this little Wolverine claw. It's not actually a Wolverine claw but I just call it the 
that. Um, and then an extra 2x2 two two, uh, jumper plate disc. So aside from that though, guys, that is really it for the entire U-Wing review. And I really don't have a lot to add, but I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the minifigures in this shot and stall for a second so I can do so because this is our first Rogue One review, man. And this is awesome. And these minifigs are great. This set is great. Let's go ahead and finish up this video. We have a mission for you. Hey! Can we help? Shouldn't you people be dead? Okay, and there you go. That's it for the first of five reviews on the new lineup for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And as I said throughout the entirety of this video, the Rebel U-Wing Fighter is a great set with a great set of minifigures and uh, just very minuscule problems that really shouldn't prevent you from wanting to pick up this set in any way, shape, or form. It's just the price point that you're gonna have to kind of swallow if you do want to pick up this set. But if you can stomach the 80 bucks, I definitely think you'll get a pretty awesome set that I think you'll be pretty satisfied with and uh, on that note though guys if you enjoyed this review or maybe found it informative if this did hopefully help you in deciding as to whether or not you do want to pick up this set be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on this set or anything I might have said down in the comments any mistakes I might have made whatever it all means a lot guys and definitely goes a long way especially when I do this annually and just pretty much put my life on hold until I get all of the sets reviewed because that's what I did last year and that's what I'm doing this year year for these five sets and again that's why I always say your support seriously means a lot especially when I attempt an ambitious series of reviews uh, like this so yeah you can also follow me on Twitter Facebook and Instagram by the way all three of those links are always down in the description below always got to mention that stuff because I'm doing some pretty awesome mini figures that you'll see sometime after these reviews X-Men Apocalypse that's gonna be a big showcase that I have coming up I've been posting previews of those over there already I'm working on a uh, Ghost Rider from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, Doctor Strange will follow along with my own custom minifigures for Rogue One. I'm going to be upgrading these guys and borrowing faces and heads and whatnot to make my own. And it's going to be pretty awesome, guys, before the year ends. I just wanted to mention all of that before we wrap up our first Rogue One review. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around. I know it was a lengthy one, but that's why I love you guys. And I will see you later. All right. Bye-bye. of five that I'm going to be doing for the, the blah, 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 blah. the Lego didn't waste oh my god oh shit are you with me nah I'd rather not die yeah they'll probably just build another one maybe even another one after that in like 30 years thanks for Lego didn't blah, 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 blah. box you should dotal totally totally that's that's a new one this is a U-Wing. Looks more like a V to me. Oh, well that's quite alright. No one cares what you think, bitch.